How to make millions in Toronto real estate. Hey, this is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Realtor. I work with investors buying and selling Toronto condos, homes, properties, and also outside of the GTA. And today we're going to talk about how to make millions in Toronto real estate. So, you all know that 90% of the millionaires in the world have done it very simply. They bought and hold real estate. They're not actually millionaires by way of making a million dollars. They're just mom and pop, they have normal jobs, they have normal houses. Look at this beautiful Toronto alleyway I'm walking in now. So beautiful. And that's what they do. So how is it done? Well, there's a few ways to make millions in real estate. There's a few ways to make millions in Toronto real estate. And I'm going to review all the ways here right now in this video, but I'm going to focus on one, which is the buy and hold. Okay, so first let's uh, quickly uh, run through them. Buy and hold means you buy a property and you hold it. You just keep it. Whether you live in it or even better, you have someone else to live in it, a renter that pays you money for your property and you use that money to pay your mortgage and all your expenses, condo fees if it's a condo, maintenance if it's a house, so another not condo property, municipal taxes, so on and so forth. Other ways to do, of course, is to buy a condo pre construction, maybe a house, townhouse, and then bank on the flip, bank on the assignment. Uh, obviously, it is risky. Every investment is risky. Every single investment is risky. But uh, that's okay. No, you go first. <laughs> it's all good. No rush. Okay, so you, you, can, you can buy in order to flip, and a lot of people do that, uh, which is fine, but a lot of people also take in risks that they should not. Okay, like people come to me and say, oh, I want to buy a condo. I have the uh, amount, but I can't really close on it. So don't buy it. Just don't. It's too risky. It's, I, I couldn't tell you to do this. Okay, maybe other agents would. I would not. I would only advise you to buy what you can actually close on and keep, okay? That's the, that's the right thing to do. It's the safe thing to do, and I like safety. I like to be safe. Look at that. So these are the garages of all these houses, okay? These are old Toronto houses. They're 100 years old, whatever, and there, there are tons of them. And I usually don't talk about houses, but they're just, just as good as a condo to make my point here. Which these people here, you know, like you see a lot of the old people sitting there on the front porch. Guess what? They bought the house for $50,000 back in the 80s or $24,000 back or whatever. And now you look at the condo and go, a million dollar condo. Oh my God. Yeah, but you know, that house was 50000 before it became $2 million. And the condo is uh, two fifty or five hundred or a million before it became double and triple and quadruple that. Why? Because we have a thing called inflation. What's inflation? Inflation means that the value of your dollar today is worth less tomorrow. So if the popsicle costs a dollar today, it's gonna to cost a dollar twenty tomorrow and dollar forty and then two dollars. Yeah. The price of popsicle just went up by a dollar, it doubled itself. But guess what? Your salary didn't. See what I'm saying? Oster and Croft. If you want to see. Okay, so you buy the popsicle, the property, the asset. Uh, in our case it's a property, it's an asset. It's an appreciating asset, as they used to say in uh, Ivy MBA school. And you sit on it, you manage it, you improve it, you squeeze as much as you can out of it, you make the ROI, the return on investment higher, and you basically sit on and wait, okay? So I bought a condo 10 years ago, I put a tenant in, and, you know, five years uh, fixed mortgage, another five years fixed mortgage. Guess what? That property in 15 to another 10 years, maybe five to 10 years, depending how fast I'm paying up, it's going to be paid. So that condo is going to be paid. No one's going to be paid, uh, let's say it's three times what it was worth, okay? So let's say I bought the, the condo at two fifty. dollars I put my 20%, 50000 cost me another ten or twenty to close, whatever. And the rest is mortgage. And that mortgage, the 200000 is basically getting paid by the tenant, not by me. So the tenant paid for my mortgage, the tenant pays for my condo fees, tenant pay for maintenance, tenant pays for everything. Okay, now if, if uh, you may find a situation where the, um, the price of the property, especially now, is, is high. And because it's high, the 20% may not be enough. So you have two options here. One option is to put more than 20%, 25, 30. You can ask me, I'll do the calculation, what's the break even point? You can decide where you want to be. The other option is you still pay the 20%, but you can top it up a little bit. So let's say you top it up by 200 bucks a month. Just to make to the equilibrium point, good enough. Still, so you invested 200 bucks a month, which is $2,400 a year. That's less than my coffee budget, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and that's it. And then you own it. And don't forget that the, the, first, uh, the first years of the mortgage, you pay mostly interest. But later on, it's mostly capital because 
uh, that's how it works. They charge you all the interest up front because the bank wants the profit up front in case whatever. And usually, most people don't hold the property until the mortgage matures or, or complete. They sell it to someone else who also takes the uh, mortgage with a higher amount of interest at the front so the bank maximizes the profit the ROI that way. Okay, very smart. So, but you can be smart too, and that's our job here, to be smart and to beat the system, to beat the game, to play better than the rest, and that's what we do here. So if you come to me and you say, Yossi, I want to invest, I say, okay, great. So first of all, I'll ask you, like, what kind of property you're looking for, uh, how much money do you have to invest, what's the total price you're looking at, kind of th those r relatively general questions, give me an idea, your know, location, so give me an idea of... of um, what you're looking at. And I want to start looking for properties and match the criteria and start to match what you have and what you can do uh, financially with the property. Okay, so try to find something that matches uh, your wishes most. Check this out, it's really cool. The future, we are Earth Guardians. It's like a, a Johnny Deppish thing. So, uh, okay, so that's what you do and um, you buy the property, so I'll give you an example. I bought uh, a condo for almost 10 years ago for 250. I put the 50 down. I lived in it or rented it. Uh, 10 years later, the bank says, uh, okay, come for your renewal, the second renewal of the five year or whatever. And I do it and the bank actually told me, this happened last week, they said, you know what? After you finish this five year period, you're only gonna have 50,000 left on the mortgage. So, wow, this is actually amazing. That means that I buy for 250, I put 50 down, and the other four chunks of 50, you know, I'm partners with the bank. The bank really owns all the condos in town. Think about it. They own 80% of everything. Okay, but they, uh, but that 80%, if I divide it by four periods of five years, that means that every five years I pay uh, uh, a quarter of the 80, so 20% I pay. So I pay 5% every year. So think about it. Every year I need to pay 5% of the value. Uh, and then in 20 years, I paid 80%, the 20 I put already, that's your 100, and I'm free and clear. So the old guy sits on the porch, that's me, in a few years, hopefully, I'm like, oh yeah, I bought this for, you know, I bought this for a million dollars, and now it's worth four. But uh, I didn't have to pay for it because I had an auxiliary apartment. Uh, technical malfunction, so I'm just gonna continue from here. So uh, the, the example again, I paid 50,000 cash for the 250 property, and it's paid for in, say, 20 years. So every five years, it's paying a fifth because the one fifth I pay up front, and then the other fifth I pay one fifth, 20% every five years, or uh, 20 divided by five, four percent, five percent every year, and there you go, and it's paid for. And if you do it many times over, um, it means that you can start amassing properties that someone else is paying for them. All you got to do is come up with that 20% down, even 30%, even 35. Okay, so. Okay, Yossi, I don't have that money. Well, if, if, if you have anything that you can invest in something that is less costly, you do not have to invest in Toronto. You know, that was kind of the status quo the last 20 years. But now, you know, we all realize that Toronto is so expensive. So you got to bring some serious cash with you, whether it's from overseas or from here or from family or whatever. But if you can't, that's also cool. Uh, buy something else. Buy in uh, Brantford, buy Hamilton, buy Kitchener, Guelph, Waterloo. Look at this. There's a garage with the Raptors and a little leaky Blue Jays. All right. <laughs> okay, so that's what you do. That's how you do it. And then you let someone else pay for your property. And that's how you make the millions of real estate. Now, there's other ways if you want to accelerate this process, you can do that too. And by way of accelerating the process, I mean is you can flip. Okay, so what's flipping? I bought the condo for 250 I put the 50 down. You know, these are just numbers, but you can say I bought the condo for a million. I put 200 down. It's, the ratio is the same. And then... Uh, my hopes are that before that condo is uh, complete, I can flip it, I can reassign the contract, assign the condo to someone else. Uh, and that usually works, I get a lot of people come to me, so if you're looking to buy an assignment, you're going to get a great deal because you get a bit of a cheaper than market or whatever developer is left over, if you're, buying to, if you're looking to sell the condo, you're still going to make money because you're making good money, you don't have the transactional, the high transactional cost, you don't have to close on it, that's very expensive, pay the... Um, land transfer tax and the Toronto land transfer tax and all that stuff that makes the closing very expensive. But instead of that, you just flip and it's basically just cash and cash. You buy, it's like buying an option. Okay, you can buy an option. So I'm buying an option to close on the condo and I'm buying an option and the contract uh, from the developer is really the option. You can think about it this way. If you understand the options in the stock market, it, there's some similarities here. Okay, 
Um, other ways you can do it is, you know, we just pass this uh, renovation site. So, you know, you know I, I do some renovations, so we find, I have clients come and say, you know, I have a 40-year-old condo, I have a 100-year-old home. We bring the crew, we do the renovation, we add value more than the cost of renovation itself, and then we sell it. So let's say the house is worth a million, but really it's a beautiful big house, but it's just old. So we, we'll spend, say, 200, 300 in it, and then we'll sell the house for 1.7, 1.8, and there's your profit right there. Okay, that obviously takes a lot of cash, it takes experience, it takes a lot of guts, it takes pay, patience. So that's why people go, that's why people go in the condos, because it's, it's easier and cheaper and faster, okay? More on this in a bit, I'll take a break and get back uh, in another section right away.